You're now listening to Hack and Grow Rich with Shaheen Shayan and his co-host, Bart Baggett, where we discuss hacking your way to success and the unconventional paths to unreasonable success with the people who've been there. And now, the author of Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult, Shaheen Shayan. Welcome to Navigating the Customer Experience. On today's episode, our guest is Shaheen Chayen. During the Iranian Revolution of 1978, Shaheen's family had to escape to survive and ended up finally migrating to Los Angeles, California. At 15 years old, Shaheen left home with nothing but the clothes on his back and created over a billion dollars in revenue by inventing the legendary smart drug known as herbal ecstasy. These childhood experiences had a major impact on his perspective of freedom, hard work, and entrepreneurship. Later, Shaheen went on to invent digital vaporization, the forerunner to today's vapes, and start a number of successful businesses with a couple notable failures. Today, he is the founder and CEO of Accelerated Intelligence, Inc., a major FBA seller with millions in sales, the lead coach at Amazon Mastery, where he teaches entrepreneurs how to crush it on the Amazon platform and an active YouTube creator. Shine is considered one of the leading global minds on what's next in e-commerce, Amazon, and the internet. He is described as the Willy Wonka of Generation X by the London Observer and Newsweek and is one of the most forward thinkers in business. With his Amazon Mastery course, he acutely recognizes trends and patterns early on the Amazon platform to help others understand how these shifts impact markets and consumer behavior. So sit back, plug your earphones in, and let's jump right into this fantastic conversation with Shane. Welcome, Shane. Thank you, Unique. Appreciate being on. And, you know, everything sounds better when someone says it with a really nice Jamaican accent. So I'm super <laughs> excited to be on with you. Awesome. Now, Shane, I know we read a little bit about your history and, you know, you're moving from um, Iraq. Iranian Revolution is from Iraq. Iran. Iran. My apologies. Iran. No, they're neighboring. It makes sense. <laughs> so could you share in your own words a little bit about your journey and how it is that you got to where you are today? Sure. You know, we moved to the United States as refugees, political refugees in the 1980s. Um, by the time I was 15, I had started my first business. I left home left family, no friends, basically sleeping in abandoned buildings, abandoned cars, trying to figure out what to do with myself. I got involved in the electronic music scene. I found a mentor and I invented a alternative to a drug that was very popular at that time called ecstasy. It became a global phenomenon. And by the time I was still in my teens with a, a grade school education, uh, I had 200 employees and it created over a billion dollars in revenue. And so I had 200 employees working for me. I had a lot of customer service people. I know it's a show about customer service, so I know a lot about that. And um, from there, I went on to inventing digital vaporization technology. All the vapes and e-cigs that you see uh, came from technology that I, I developed and invented uh, and patented. And from there, I went on to master the Amazon landscape. And so now I teach people how to create recurring revenue streams by starting Amazon seller accounts and selling products through the Amazon platform, through my Amazon mastery course. All right. Now, could you share with our listeners, for those persons who may be new to this whole Amazon reselling, what are some key things that need to be present for you to be successful um, in this channel? Yeah, look, I think, you know, I interestingly enough, I think one of the things that's that's important um, when you're selling on the Amazon platform is that you have to know how to tell the right story. One of the things that we learned from platforms like Amazon is that 
the form of marketing as it was known in the past as disruption marketing changed dramatically. And whereas in the past, marketers were disrupting you to get your attention, Amazon changed that game. So now, instead of being disruption marketing, we are permission marketing. And not only that, when you sell something on Amazon and you're a seller, you have to know how to speak the language of conversion for that platform, and it's very different. And mm -hmm. so the work we do is based on the work of a guy named Professor Caldini, who wrote the book Influence and another book called Persuasion. And what we do is we teach people how to use influence in creating their listing, how to become decision architects so that when people arrive at your listing, they're already sold. I like to say often that the sale is made before the person even lands on your listing. And that's mm -hmm. so true, so true, so more true today than ever. Yeah, amazing. I like the phrase or the coin that you just termed, decision architects. It sounds so eloquent. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you have a book out, um, or is it out yet? Billion? I do. Yeah, the book just dropped. It's called Billion, How I Became King of the Throw Pill Cult. It's available on uh, Amazon, Kindle, Apple. You can get the audiobook now. The audiobook just dropped too. So it's called Billion, How I Became King of the Throw Pill Cult. I'm super excited about that. We just got a film deal for that. And then anybody that's interested, I have an Amazon course where I teach people how to start Amazon businesses from anywhere in the world. I've got people in Africa, people in Saudi Arabia, people in the United States, Canada. And for any of your listeners, um, if you guys mention Yannick, um, I will give you that program for free. It's a $200 program. It's a one-hour course, A to Z. How do you get reviews? How do you do great customer service? How do you do all those things that go along with finding a product and selling it on the Amazon platform? How do you start a seller account? And anybody that wants to can reach out to me. My email is darkzess at gmail.com, D-A-R-K-Z-E-S-S at gmail.com. Amazing. So tell us a little bit about the book, um, Shane. Yeah. So the book basically just goes through my journey and my my story uh, that I told you now that was basically uh, going from being, uh, you know, uh, broke and sleeping where I could lay my head to creating over a billion dollars in revenue. And there were some very exciting times uh, during that period of time. But you know, I was a kid and I didn't know much about business and all the lessons I learned, I kept in a journal and I have those in the book. So it, it's very interesting. It's the book is part uh, biography, part autobiography and part personal development where I teach and coach people how to become the best versions of themselves using lessons that were hard fought for me. All right. Now, our, as you mentioned, our show is about navigating the customer experience. And I know Amazon is a brilliant platform, really, really great. Yeah. Of course, I'm sure everybody in the world uses it, right? Um, but a lot of industries um, that may be tapping into the Amazon platform, I'm sure, are affected by, let's say, the shipping and logistics issues that has been impacted by the, um, you know, the world globally because of the pandemic. Um, what are some things maybe, you know, that you've experienced that has helped to kind of manage the customer experience? Because that does form part of the customer journey when their expectation is X, but the actual experience is Y. How do you go around that? How do you navigate that to kind of come out with a, still a very good experience? So this is really interesting, and I'm glad you uh, brought that up. So I'll tell you this. I think there's there's a couple things that have happened. So Amazon this company that was started by this little guy, Jeff Bezos, little at the time, now he's huge, mm -hmm. uh, disrupted the industry of commerce. And he did this very similar, I, I, I like to use the example of Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly was a disruptor, why? Well, back in the turn of the century, if you wanted to buy something in America, you'd go into a store, and the man would say, what do you need today, Mr. Jones? You'd say, well, I need some bread, I need some beer, I need some sundries, I need some rubber bands, whatever. He'd put them in a bag, he'd tell you how much it was, and you would leave. You would have no choice. So this guy comes around, Piggly Wiggly, he goes, we're going to disrupt this entire industry. How are you going to disrupt it? Well, we're going to build these things. Well, what are these things? They're called aisles. 
they're going to allow us to have more than one brand allowing competition mm -hmm. uh, in the marketplace. And we're going to allow customers to come in and pick whatever they want and bring it up to the front and check out. It'll give them an opportunity to see, touch, feel the product. Not only that, we're going to have these things called carts where people can go through the aisles, put stuff in carts, and then check them out. It changed commerce forever. Similarly, Jeff Bezos has done the same thing with his marketplace. Now, what's the important thing from a customer service standpoint that he's done is that he's taken the friction out of the sale. Mm -hmm. In the old days of the internet, we tend to forget, especially people who are my age, I'm 46 now, and I, I remember the first days of the internet. Younger people might not remember it. You didn't know who to trust. You felt more secure going to a brick and mortar store where you could touch and feel the product and buy it. You didn't know if you bought it on a website, if they would take your credit card number, if you'd never see the product, if you'd see it in three weeks. All those variables have been taken out. So again, mm -hmm. Jeff Bezos is being proactive with his customer service. The best customer service is done before the consumer ever even buys the product. Mm -hmm. He made sure that the products on his site were of high enough quality. He made sure that there was plenty of selection and most importantly, the lowest, most competitive prices, which he realized was very important. People wanted to save money. Now, from a customer service standpoint, what Jeff Bezos did was he said, you know what? We're going to let the customer handle their own returns. Insane. Nobody had ever done that before. He said, yeah, we believe the customers can handle most of their issues and they don't need us. And besides, the cost for us to pay a representative, whatever it is, $5, $10 an hour, on the end of the other phone to deal with a customer for an hour or two may be more than the cost of the goods. So what, what he did is he created easy returns. If you go onto Amazon to this day, you'll see easy returns. If you buy something and you don't like it, you go into the app or you go into the back end and you click return. It says, what's your reason? You say other, you're good to go. They refund it right back to your card. In many instances, you don't even need to send it back. So it's a form of efficiency. Now, it's a dual-edged sword, Unique, because it has also created greed within customers. People are needlessly returning things, and people are more expectant now for the silliest reasons. Somebody might order a can of a food product, eat the food product, and then return the tin because it has a dent in it, half empty. And this is, this is much more commonplace. Now, Amazon, interestingly enough, doesn't care unless it's their own product because, and even then they don't care because they've got so, such higher margins. But mm -hmm. if it's a third-party product, Amazon just bills the third-party company. It becomes the seller's issue that their product was returned, and they handle the customer service from that end. So nowadays, when we do customer service, I have a, a, a policy where we just refund people's money. But every once in a while, every occasion, when we get a ridiculous customer, somebody who is absolutely ridiculous, I will personally call them up myself. And they are always shocked that the president of the company is on the phone. And not only will I get them on the phone myself, I will let them know how silly they are being in a very polite way. <laughs> I know this goes against everything in customer service. And then I will sell them something else. I will make it a point not to leave the phone call without having sold them something. And it always leaves a great experience, a great story that they're going to tell people. And, you know, I don't do this with reasonable customers. So if you get a product that's bad or you have a bad service experience or there's an employee that maybe treated you unfairly, then, of course, we just refund your money and we take care of you the best that we can always. Mm -hmm. But occasionally you will get somebody who's being unreasonable. And the best way to approach somebody who's being unreasonable is to confront them with their unreasonableness and to just <laughs> just call them up and and have a, a real adult conversation. And more and more, I'm finding that that's a very effective tool because people who are trying to cheat the system, people who are trying to take advantage uh, are generally cowards. So when confronted, 
you come across that. Uh, another issue that we have is reviews. So this is one of the big things. Amazon has one of the largest blog networks in the universe. Why? Mm. Because they've got you and me buying things on there and writing content for them in the form of reviews, making videos in the form of reviews. That's all searchable content that you're producing for free and giving to Amazon as their property. They mm. own that work that you just created and put on their site. And for it, they give you back nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, reviews are a dual-edged sword. Okay, So you get some people leaving honest reviews, and you get some people leaving fake reviews. Some competitors may leave reviews for your product because they don't like you and they want people to think that your product is bad. We've had competitors leave reviews saying, hey, there's a fly in the product. Literally, there's a fly in the product. There's a this or that. We had one guy putting magnets inside some tea and being like, hey, look, it sticks. We're like uh, static electricity. It's a thing. <laughs> so there's there's a lot of that going going on. But at the same time, consumers are now learning that they can use their reviews, their social proof, against the companies as a tool for them to get free things. Mm. So what they will do is they will leave a bad review and then sit back and wait. People do this on Twitter. They do it on Facebook. That's why they take to social media. And they'll just sit back. Maybe they'll they'll do something weird. I heard of a guy who uh, tore his shoelaces or tore the soles off his Nikes and posted it on social media and was w waited for Nike to call him back and give him a new pair. But it's this e-commerce 3.0 that has spoiled the consumer at the end of the day. And it's for those ridiculous types of things where I, I feel compelled to call those people back. Now, I don't encourage anybody to do that because you'll never get what you want um, if you're trying to cheat us. Um, you know, And it's unfair to other people that have legitimate grievances. But there's a whole faction of people that leave negative reviews for other people just so they can engage them and then get a free thing or get a refund or, or not have to pay for their product. And as any business, you, especially a small business, uh, you have to have a way to address that in your business. And my way is just have the CEO call them. You won't get very much of those kinds of calls, but you got to call them. And sometimes you just have to reason with people um, mm -hmm. because people are unreasonable in general with their expectations. So we have another brand of glasses that we make of uh, sunglasses, and it's a special type of lens that you wear at night, and it blocks the blue lights, and it's one of the best in the marketplace. And with that product, we offer an unlimited money-back guarantee. They're called Sleep Doctor Glasses. And the website is sleepdoctorglasses.com, and we offer an unlimited warranty. And the reason why we did this, and it's a, it's not just a um, defe defect warranty. It's a run your car over it warranty. It's a uh, grab a hammer and drill drill holes through it warranty. <laughs> Whatever you do, run it run over it with your truck warranty. And the reason we do this is that most people don't want to damage their personal property. Most people love the product so much that they don't want to damage it. But if you're one of those people who does, we're going to use that as a story. And we're going to tell that story. And not only are we going to tell that story, you're going to tell that story to everybody that you know. You're going to go, man, I bought these glasses for 40 bucks, 50 bucks from Sleep Doctor Glasses. And um, my 400-pound uh, gorilla that I keep as a pet sat on them and smashed them and they just sent me a new pair. And they said, as many times as he sits on them, I'm going to get new pairs. And that creates more marketing, more promotion, more social proof than any marketing that we could do. So you can't do that for every product, especially if you have a, a product that's not as high quality. But it's a great hack to you know offer that to them. When I was in, in the vaporizer business, we offered extended warranties. You know, for electronics, uh, a lot of companies make a lot of money on the extended warranties. We actually made more money on the extended warranties than we did selling the product. Because what's your cost on an extended warranty? Zero. And mm -hmm. you get 100 125 bucks on a $400 product. It's 25% pure profit. 
that you're making with the product. Yeah, you're selling it for four hundred dollars, but you got parts, you got a manufacturer. So warranties are beautiful, and and rarely, by the way, for for you guys who are watching this, work in the favor of consumers. So if you just always say no to any warrant, extended warranty, and at the end of the day, you use that money to fix the thing that breaks once, you'll be in a better place. So the the, the rule of thumb is do not buy the extended warranties. They don't work in the favor of consumers. But we had these vaporizers and we had this guy who, and remember, these are the first vaporizers. They were huge. They were not the e-cigs that we see today. This was the original Stone Age vaporizers. And we had this guy who bought the extended warranty and then he bought the additional, uh, sl uh, not, I, I want to say slip and fall. He, he bought the original, uh, you know, water damage. We had, we had a, a different levels of the warranty. So one level was just to protect you against defects. Another one was drop it in the pool and we cover it. And he bought the extended warranty and he would do crazy things. He would drag it behind a car. He would light like all kinds of objects inside of it and make them explode. And he would call without fail every month and be like, hey, I broke my device. Time to send me the new one. And finally, I told him, look, I've, I've, I called him personally. He was shocked again that the CEO was calling him. I said, I love this. Thank you for making these videos. People love them on our uh, website. Here's what I'm going to do for you. Anytime you want a new device, just call me. I've refunded your money. I've refunded you for the extended warranty. You no longer have an extended warranty, but here's what you have. Call me anytime. Here's my cell phone. And anytime you break your device, for whatever reason, I'll just send you a new one. You don't even have to send it back. And he was so pleased. I think he did it maybe three more times after that. We never heard from him again, but he continued to make videos about how great our device was. And so it, it's another great practice I think that people don't do, especially CEOs of companies or people that are running companies, even if you're a mom and pop is that we lose touch with our customers. We lose mm -hmm. touch with the people that are paying our salaries, the people yeah. that are paying for our livelihoods. And I think it's great to reach out and get to know them. I know it's taboo. And look, if you're a hothead, you probably shouldn't be the one doing that. Somebody else on your team should be doing that. But if you're cool and you like people, you like humans, what a great <laughs> thing to do. Sure. Everybody likes humans. On, on, <laughs> it depends on the day I'm, I'm talking to people. My patients run. <laughs> Runs in sometimes <laughs> oh goodness yeah all right thank you for sharing um could you also share with us what's the one online resource tool website or app that you absolutely can't live without in your business oh man i use lots of great tools um so i love evernote which mm -hmm. i think is fantastic i use evernote um i love one password we use that company-wide to maintain passwords, which I think is really useful. We're big fans of Asana uh, as far as uh, task management for my managers that I do. I love the website Upwork and Fiverr. We're big mm -hmm. fans of that. We use that in our FBA seller course. So if you guys go to fbasellercourse.com or if you email me, darkzess at gmail.com. That's D-A-R-K-Z-E-S-S -S at gmail.com. I'll give you the Amazon Mastery course for free, the one-hour crash course. Um, so those would be probably my top tools as far as like personal productivity. I love a VR app called Trip. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, it works on the Oculus um, ecosphere. So if you use the Oculus VR headset. It's a fantastic app that gets you in a flow state in under 10 minutes. And it's one of the most beautiful meditative apps I think out there. It's really a game changer. So I really recommend the Trip app. I think it's really fantastic. And I also love uh, the Muse headband for meditation as well. I think those, those two things are really great. All right. Could you also share with us, Shane, uh, what is one or two two books that have had the biggest impact on you. It could be a book that you read a very long time ago or even one that you read recently that has left a uh, impressionable mark on you. Billion. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say my own book, Billion, How I Became King of the Thrillpoke Cult. Uh, again, available on Amazon and Audible. Check it out. If you guys like my story, if anything I said here inspired you or rang true with you, check out my book and leave me a review. But I, I'm a big fan of David Allen getting things done. I think he's he's an amazing, uh, probably the best person in personal productivity. If you're in customer service, that'll be a great book. I like Richard Koch, the 80-20 manager. 
which would be great for anybody who's managing customer service people or managing any people of any kind. Um, unreasonable success and how to achieve it by Koch as well. Uh, and always the books by Robert Caldini, Influence and Pre-Suasion. All right. Fantastic. So we will have the links to those books in the show notes of this episode. Now, Shaheen, could you share with us what's one thing that's going on in your life right now that you're really excited about? Either something you're working on to develop yourself or your people. Unique, I want to come to Jamaica. I want to come <laughs> down to Jamaica. I want to come You've never down been in, before? In many times. I've been oh. many times. I've been to Negril. I've been to Montego Bay. I've been to, I've been all over Jamaica, actually. That and I, I, lovely. Yeah, I love the island, love the people, um, love the culture. Such a such an amazing place. I've been to to uh, uh, Kingston. Uh, I've been up in uh, Strawberry. Is it Strawberry Hill? I think Strawberry, Strawberry Hill. Hill. Very nice. Yeah, Strawberry Hill. I love. You are a Jamaican veteran. I'm a Jamaican veteran. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Guys, well, the, best the next music time you come to Jamaica, make sure you hit me up. Will do. Where are you? I'm in Kingston. Oh, I am I love, in Kingston. I love that. I love that. Yeah, we can drive up to Blue Mountains, get some of that coffee. It's uh, such an amazing place right now. Um, look, uh, right now I am busy teaching people, inspiring people how to get out of the grind. The greatest crime that has been done to the average person in the last hundred years is this concept that you have to sell your hours for money. And we're changing that now. We're changing that paradigm with the work that we're doing on Amazon. Anybody can start an Amazon business for little or low cash, very little money. And to grow that business to a seven figure business in a couple years by following some very simple paint by paint by number recipes that we teach you. So my goal for the next year is to inspire a thousand people to start a thousand Amazon companies, becoming a seller on the platform, creating great products and selling them and then creating amazing companies in the next two years and selling those to create recurring revenue. All right. Sounds fantastic. I love it. All right. So Shane, our listeners would have tapped into this episode. They are super excited about what you are working on, your purpose, what goals you are really and truly trying to achieve in the next couple of years. And they would like to get in touch with you. I know you've given us your email address at least two or three times in this interview, but please, can you share with us where can they find you online and how can they get in touch with you? Thank you so much, Anique. So, yes. Here's how you get a hold of me. So if you guys are interested in this content, and by the way, Unique, if you like, um, we'll rebroadcast this on our channel. We're up to, I think, about 67,000 subscribers now. So we'll share this and we'll try to send some subscribers to your show. I know we have a lot of customer service people who watch our show who would be very interested in the content you're putting out. Um, so with your permission, we'll do that as well. So we have a show called Hack and Grow Rich. It's available on Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever podcasts are found, and also on YouTube if you prefer video content. So make sure to check us out on those channels. Like, subscribe, dislike, put rude comments in the comment section, whatever you want to <laughs> do. Um, also, my book, once again, Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult, is available wherever books are found and on Audible. And additionally, if you're interested in that course, reach out to me by email. That email is going to be D-A-R-K-Z-E-S-S at gmail.com. And to learn more about my course, you can go to FBASellerCourse.com. FBA, of course, standing for Fulfillment by Amazon. All right. Okay, so we'll have all of those different links and channels that Shaheen has indicated for you to get in touch with him in the show notes of this episode. Now, before we wrap our interviews up, we always like to ask our guests, do you have a quote or a saying that during times of adversity or challenge, you'll tend to revert to this quote? It kind of helps to get you back on track or get you back refocused if for any reason you got derailed. Do you have one of those? Gosh, yeah, I've got two going through my head, and okay, my intuition tells me to go to this one. All right, Yannick, why do angels fly? I, 
my dear. <laughs> because God God designed them to fly. Because they take themselves lightly. Seriousness <laughs> is a disease. And I've noticed you've laughed a lot during this show and you laugh and you smile, and that's great. But I love the smile. To, we all have to remember this is not serious. And <laughs> business is not serious. Customer service is not serious. None of this is serious. Seriousness is a disease of the ego. So when you get that angry customer on the other end of the phone, when you get that disgruntled employee, when you get that person who you have to deal with, remember to smile and remember why angels fly. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you know, I think it's the first time in the five years I've been doing this podcast that I guess that's given me a quote or a saying that made me smile, like really, really smile. Like, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Shane. I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Really, really did. You have a very infectious personality. You are clearly very passionate about your goal and your purpose in life. And I am fully behind you 150%. I hope you get those thousand customers to start those businesses. And I hope you get them to really, you know, see their purpose and really um, achieve their goals. So thank you so much, Shane. Honored to be on. Thank you so much for having me. So just want to remind our listeners, please feel free to hop onto Facebook and join our private Facebook group, Navigating the Customer Experience Community, and follow us on Twitter at Navigating CX. Until next time, I'm your host, Yannick Grant. And that's a wrap.